tutorial on this. Making a beach scene pop-it-ups card and adding a character to the Adirondack chair. This is my project for the June 2015 Designer Challenge. The theme is what's in a name and we have to use dyes based on our initials. So I have a kitty on the beach for KB. I've started with a white A2 long card. So that's four and a quarter by 11 inches scored in the middle at five and a half inches. I found some pattern paper in a sand color. I cut the top piece to about two and a quarter high and cut the top edge with that beach edges die. And the bottom sand piece is just a rectangle four and a quarter by four and three quarters. I only need a tape runner to add these inside the card, but it is important that when I'm putting the bottom piece on, I'm only using adhesive around the sides and the bottom edge. So nothing in the middle or along the top edge at all. And then that can just line up and glue right inside the card, just making sure that the top edge is right in the fold of the card. When I put the top piece in, the sand piece, I'm going to use adhesive only on the sides and not along the top or the bottom edge at all. Next, I'll use the Adirondack chair pop-up die to cut the Adirondack chair into the card. Now the little alignment nubs on the side of the die make it very easy to line it up perfectly right over the fold of the card. Now this is two layers. It's pattern paper over the top of a relatively thick cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to a precision plate. That's a Sizzix product in the bottom. So that's going to replace my bottom cutting pad and then my normal cutting pad on top. And then when I roll that through because of that precision plate it will actually give better pressure against that intricate die and it cuts right through both layers like butter in just one pass. Now I can remove the die off of the paper and then what I'm left with is my Adirondack chair has been cut down through both layers and because I use no adhesive behind the center portions of the sand, those can be cut away. Now I do want to make sure that I'm not cutting my white cardstock. I'm only cutting the sand paper and I want to cut a little bit higher than the fold on those top ones. I really just want that white cardstock to be able to fold easily against the sand paper and not have anything bunching in that fold. So when I take my little detail scissors in there, I'm actually cutting the sandpaper away a little bit higher than the fold. And now I'm just going to repeat that exact same process for the bottom half of the chair. And again, I want to go lower than the fold so that it can the white cardstock can fold easily. So I'm taking the detail scissors in there, just going a little bit further than the fold, cutting just the sandpaper away from the chair. And then the only other thing I need to do is just get all of my confetti out of that. So if that's still in there, I'll just take my little detail tweezers and poke them all out. The chair is an easy fold. I always say find that center fold again first. And then what you're looking to do is get the arms of the chair to come out toward you. So pretend, I'm doing it backwards, but you're pretend you've got your thumbs right in there from the front of the card. And you're going to trace those up to the top where those arms touch the wall and make sure that those little folds are pinched. Then you're going to take your thumbs or your fingers down to the floor, all the way to the floor. So make sure you go all the way down and give those little folds a pinch. And then I always just pinch the little center of the arms and kind of give the chair a little help knowing that it should be folding at that final set of horizontal slats. And then from there it usually knows what it wants to do and you can just carefully fold the card closed and it will find the rest of the folds for you. But that's what you're looking to make. It's just a series of back and forth folds. It's a box coming out and a box coming in and that's what makes the chair. I've cut a piece of clouds pattern paper and kind of peeled up the sand a little bit to where I can tuck it down beneath the sand and then just press that back into place. I just cut the clouds paper a little bit tall that way I didn't have to do precise measuring and then afterwards I can just cut off the excess. The Adirondack chair die comes with a set of decorative arms and what you do is you just die cut those out of the same color as your chair or I suppose you could do contrasting color if you want. One nice feature about the little arms is that they have a fun emboss feature. It's optional, so if you die cut it and just pop it out of the die, it's going to be plain, solid, whatever color or pattern you used. If you'd like to take advantage of that emboss feature, you need to switch to an embossing sandwich in your machine. So for a big shot, that's impressions and silicone on tab one, and then a cutting pad on top and roll it through. 
I do always link all of my supplies on my blog post and in the About section of YouTube videos, so if you need sources on those supplies, you can find them in the About section. And there, check out that cool emboss, kind of a wood grain feature for the top of the arms. Since the decorative arms are bigger, you definitely want your adhesive to go on the pop-up arms and then press the decorative arm to that adhesive, so not the other way around, otherwise you'll end up with exposed adhesive on all the overhangs of your decorative arms. Now I'm just going to repeat that process. I'm using my fine line bottle with my Lineco pH neutral adhesive. Guess where you can check for the supplies? The About section or the blog post. Both of them in the About section of the YouTube video. The Beach Edges die also comes with a Waves Edge and I'm adding my adhesive to the back of the blue one and then I'm going to just glue that to another Waves Edge that I cut out of white cardstock and I'll just offset those a little bit from each other to create that little white shadow around the waves. And I've also cut the one that I typically use for sand. It also works great for just rolling water. So I've cut that out of a little bit lighter blue and I'm going to layer those two together at the bottom here to create my little C section of the card. And one thing I like to do is just cut my cardstock a little bit wider and that way I can mess around and have a little bit of play in that for where I want those waves to line up and then I'll just turn the card around and cut off the excess. I've decided on a craft colored backing card. That way it'll just look like more sand back behind the chair. It'll make a good wall color for me for the front of the card as well. Now you always want to add the adhesive. When you're adding a backing card, you want the adhesive to go on the pop-up card itself. That way you can avoid the pop-up with your adhesive. And I always like to work one side and then the other. So here I've just added the adhesive to the pop-up card. I've done it all over the back wall section. That way the bottom floor section has no adhesive and I can slide it around that card, take my thumbnails, jam it into the fold so that it's lined up perfectly, and then just wiggle that backing card right up the back wall. The second half of the backing card is even easier. Just fold it down. The adhesive should still go on the pop-up card. You might use the backing card to judge where that adhesive should stop. Tape runner everywhere and then either close the card or you can kind of do the wiggle thing and now the floor is going to be connected. Give everything a good press. Another great item in the Beach Collection is the Palm Tree and Pale die. It does come with a nice stencil feature. It's optional. I'm just using a little marker to go through and add some detailing to the trunk. I could have also sponged that or even embossed it. trees put together in that manner that you just watched with the fun island music and then I'm just gluing those to the back wall anywhere there behind the chair in a fun position. I've got the precision plate back in my die cutting machine so that I can cut the pieces for the pail and the shovel out of shimmer sheets. And one feature of the pail die is that it has a little slit so that you can put something in it. Most likely it's going to be sand for this card. I've cut another one of those wavy sand edges out of the sand colored pattern paper and then I'm just going to cut rough cut kind of a pale shaped piece that can go up through that slit and make it appear that there is sand in the bucket. The pail handle has little holes on the end that allow you to put it over the pegs of the pail and then you can put the shovel on that handle if you'd like to have it hanging off the shovel before you put the other side on. Now one thing about shimmer sheets is that's pretty springy material. It's going to want to spring right back off those pegs again. So you can either secure that with like a little glue dot or my favorite thing is just to pinch the hole on the end of the pail handle after you get it on the peg. So that's a matter of kind of pinching that hole sort of hot dog style. So you have a long fold, pinch it down and that way it won't have the opportunity to pop back off of those pegs and you won't need any adhesive under the pail handle itself. For attaching this inside the card, I've decided to put a little bit of the Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive tape up the side of the chair and then just stick the pail to it. I am going to put it a little bit high on that 
leg so that it has the opportunity to fold down all the way flat. That handle has a little dimension to it. So does the shovel. It's just easier if it's a little bit higher up on the chair. And I'm also going to secure the shovel to the front of the chair just so it doesn't fling around on me. Now at this point I need a photograph of the inside of my card and I've taken a photograph and then shrunk it down so that it can fit in a couple rectangle dies. Those are ones that I pulled out of the rectangle accordion die set. Really you could use anything, you could even just use a trimmer to make the, that little frame, but since I had those nested rectangle dies I thought that they would just be perfect for this. So I've cut the photograph of the card's interior and then I'm going to make a little frame with those two nested rectangle dies and just glue that right over the top. Let me show you a fun way to style the character dies when you want to change their expressions, like I want to do with Whiskers the Cat. I'm going to start by taking a dark brown cardstock and adding some double-sided adhesive to the back so that it will be a sticker. And I'm going to start first with the detail layer of the cat. And I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of brown cardstock around that. I need a little room because after we're carefully removing the die, and most likely all the pieces are going to stay in there because of the double-sided adhesive, I'm going to put the shadow layer around that detail layer and it's just going to barely fit. You're going to just take the inside of that die and just line it up perfectly right around the edge of that cap. And then I would definitely suggest taping it down because you're making a very thin piece here. But what's going to happen is when you do the detail layer and then the shadow layer around it, you will end up with a very thin line to go around the cat to create the detail of his tail and his little legs. And the best way to show you what I mean is to go ahead and cut now what I'm going to use for his body. What I'm going to use for his body is this fun piece of cat fur paper that I picked up last week when I was in Connecticut. And I just want to find an area that's going to work for me. I kind of like this more concentrated area of fur up here. And it's the shadow layer that's going to be used here for this particular cat. So I just need a piece of paper that's big enough for that shadow layer. And then I'll just run that through in the usual manner. Now I can start removing that little edger around my detail layer and start adding it to the other shadow layer. So that's going to be a very thin piece, but luckily it is self-adhesive so I don't have to worry about glue. I just have to carefully get it up off of there and then onto the shadow layer lining up. I think it's easiest to start with the tail and just start with the tail and just go right around the piece, lining up that little edger all the way around the cap. This will work with any of the characters. Just do that same thing where you cut the detail and then the shadow layer, and then you'll be able to change. See, now you notice that the face doesn't have any cutouts, so you'll be able to change the expression to be whatever you want. You can also kind of have their face offset. It can be higher, it can be lower. You can just change the way it looks. Okay, I've added double-sided adhesive to the back of some pink cardstock, and I'm gonna add the little pink nose to the center of the little detail layer nose. And then after I've got that on, that will help me trim away the eyeballs because I don't want that little shadow there to dictate for me where the eyeballs go. I want to be able to put the eyeballs wherever I want. But I still want to have that fun little brown shadow around the nose. So that's why I put the nose onto the piece first. Then I can use my little detail scissors and just trim away most of the eyeballs just kind of tracing around the edge of that nose. And you can see that can really go anywhere now in the open space. And I'll put it there temporarily. I have a feeling I'm probably going to move it based on where I decide to put the eyeballs for this one. But for now, I'll just set it on there. Then I'm going to take the little pieces that I cut that detail layer again out of the pink cardstock, just the top part of the cap so that I could get those little centers of the ears out of the pink and just add those to my little kitty. Yep, I've decided I'm going to move the little nose. I've added the eyeballs and I've put them over a little bit more to the right so the cat will be appear to be looking towards the right. And then I'm going to add that little nose piece now, a little bit overlapping the eyeballs. And then I'm going to add the collar that comes with Whiskers the cat. I'm going to add the whiskers. And then I also added little brown pieces inside the eyes so that they would show up better. Now I repeated that exact same cat process to make a second cat, and I just changed his expression, having him looking up wistfully. He'll be for the front of the card. Okay, I've added some double-sided adhesive to a thin strip of white cardstock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel up the liner on that tape and fold that strip over. So what I'm looking to do is make a double thick strip of white cardstock. And I still want some hanging off the end. I want enough for a little fold underfoot. I'm making a little L support to put my cat inside the chair. So now that little piece of 
cardstock that's sticking out can be folded under to become the little foot that'll stand on the bottom of the card. What can happen with the cat is it can go against the back wall or the back of the chair. That's easy. Just use some adhesive. It can go up one slat with an L support or it can even go further forward two slats with an L support. I'm choosing the two slat option. The one slat option will make that L support not even visible. The two slat option you'll be able to see it but your cat will be further forward in the chair. So make your own choices. Okay, a little double-sided adhesive on the base of that foot. Now I'm going to straighten it out to make it easier to slide down through one of the slots in the chair. And then it's just going to press right to the base of the card. Let me show you that from the side so that you can see where it is there. Notice it's just right stuck to the base of the card. And when the card is at 90 degrees, the little L support should be at 90 degrees. And you'll see that that will now open and close with the card. I'll be able to attach that little kitty right there to the front of that. It's a little tall. I'm going to trim a little bit off. And then I'll just use my double-sided adhesive to do the adhering of the cat to the front of that support. Now this is not the only way to animate a character further forward in the chair. You could also do just a simple box pop-up built into the fold of the chair itself in the seat. I just find that this is a little bit better because I don't have to worry about the adhesive popping up on my box support. I'm really not using the chair to support the cat. All the chair is doing is pulling the L support up, so it's just much less pressure on the chair's seat. The front of the card is pretty straightforward. I'm going to add a little bit of wood grain paper to the base so that it looks like a floor and then a little baseboard that's just a strip of white cardstock with a couple score lines in it and then I'm going to add my little framed picture of the beach and that's going to go on the wall over there kind of closer to the right and then I'm going to add my second little whiskers the cat and this one I made in the same manner as the inside one I just kind of snipped a little bit of his smile off so he looked a little more wistful and then had him looking up towards this scene on the beach that he just wishes he was there I finished the card by computer generating the dreams do come true greeting for the front of the card and then just cut it out with a tag die and tied a little bow through it with some twine and then inside I used the farm greetings clear stamps with just some selective inking I only wanted to use the huge congrats and the congratulations portion of that stamp for my tag on the inside of the card. If you're interested in some of those supplies that I used in this video you can check the links in the about section below this video. Elizabeth Craft Designs products are found in craft stores worldwide. You can go to ecraftdesigns.com to find out where you can purchase these. If you are a Facebook user, I would love it if you would like my Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer, where I post daily inspiration. Make sure you check out the awesome What's in a Name challenge cards by the team on the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog. The link is in the About section, and you'll find more pop-up ideas on my blog, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching.